Now, back to Sunrise on News Radio 880 KCMX. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. 17 minutes after the hour, and it's a great privilege uh, to bring on to the program this morning uh, Utah State Representative Ken Ivory. He's, uh, you might ask, why a uh, state representative from the great state of Utah, but when you hear, you will realize that the work that Ken has been doing, of course, uh, he's started the American Lands Council, the website AmericanLandsCouncil.org, and Ken, I want to welcome you onto the program. Fantastic work you're doing uh, exposing what's going on with uh, federal management of our state lands. And this is uh, just, uh, I mean, it's what we've all been talking about. I mean, timber industry is near and dear to our heart. We've lost all our mills. We've lost all our sawmills. Our, our, uh, our timber has been taken away from us, and our logging trucks are gone. And it's a renewable resource. I mean, in southwestern Oregon, uh, Northern California, our region, our forests grow 1 billion, in fact, it's 1.2, but 1 billion board feet of timber a year. And uh, it's, it's staggering to think that these, manage, these lands aren't managed. So, Ken, good morning and welcome to the program. Well, thanks for having me on. I mean, you point out how big this issue is, and, and it really... When it, when it comes right down to it, uh, Ronald Reagan at one point said there are no easy answers, but there are simple ones. A and the simple answer really is for the federal government to, to focus on doing those things that only it can do well, world peace, sound monetary system, and, and quit trying to, to do or do better uh, things that shouldn't be doing at all, like local land use planning and you know, particularly forest planning. I mean, you know your forest in Oregon better than anyone. And what's sad is we're seeing that kind of devastating result where federal policies have prevented the harvesting of trees in any commercially viable quantity all over the West. And so we're burning. We're burning nearly 7 million acres of forest a year, killing millions of animals, destroying watershed, uh, polluting the air, destroying the economies, in the name of so-called environmentalism when if we go back to just the very simple policies of, of greater access greater health and greater productivity we have viable communities we've got healthier forests and we've got better access to them and all it really takes is for the federal government to honor the very same statehood language with oregon that it kept with Missouri and Illinois and all states east of Colorado. Exactly, and it boils down to, because the language is all there in the way the states were formed and how the federal government was going to manage. It was a trust, and they were going to release, but it's all about power and control, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. I mean, if you, if you think about it, at, at one point, the, um, the federal government controlled more than 90% Ninety percent of the land in in the states uh, like Illinois and Missouri and Arkansas and Louisiana, they were ninety percent federally controlled for decades. And so, so think about this for a second. See if this sounds familiar. These are the arguments that were made successfully by by uh, a particular Western state. See if you can guess. Which Western state successfully made these arguments to have their land turned back over, uh, transferred from the federal government? They said, look, federal control over vast amounts of the public land within the states restricts the state's ability to provide for and manage the growth and progress of the state. It harms the state's ability to improve, protect, and manage its resources. It does. It's, detri it's detrimental to the state's ability to generate revenue. Now, mind you, these are arguments that were already made successfully in compelling the federal government to transfer the land. They said the Statehood Enabling Act terms create an obligatory compact. 
such that any act by the federal government to delay the transfer of the public lands would undoubtedly be an infraction of the compact. And then they said such an oppressive system of federal control over lands within a state has implications of the deepest magnitude and demands the most serious attention of Congress. Well, any idea which western state successfully made those arguments in compelling Congress to transfer the title to their lands? Ken, I, I have no idea, and I can't wait for the answer. Well, well that was Illinois. Um, Illinois was Illinois was 96% federally controlled for decades. And those were the arguments that they made successfully in compelling the federal government to transfer their lands because they knew they simply couldn't operate their state. They didn't have a Republican form of government. They didn't have the constitutional equality of states that the Supreme Court said just last year is absolutely essential to the harmonious operation of our Republican form of government. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, Ken, we've got to get to a quick little break. We've got uh, Utah State Representative Ken Ivory with us. He's also the founder of the American Lands Council, his website, AmericanLandsCouncil.org. We've had him on before. It's going to be sensational. We've got to have him come right back. But quick a break and uh, an update from the Bloomberg Market Update. Ken, hold on the phone a second, and we'll be right back. So get up. Sunrise on News Radio 880 KCMX. Good morning, everybody. 33 minutes after the hour, it's the Sunrise Show. Craig Furnickin is your host, and thrilled to welcome onto the program. Uh, Utah State Representative Ken Ivory, and he's with District 47. He's just been reelected to his third term, so Ken, congratulations with that. And you're the uh, founder and uh, of AmericanLandsCouncil.org. AmericanLandsCouncil.org. Yeah, check that out. Get connected, and uh, especially Facebook and everything else, because now there's a petition to be signed. And uh, Ken, explain that a little bit for our listeners. Well, yeah, and just to clarify, I didn't start the American Lands Council. I passed a bill that was the Transfer of Public Lands Act, and then it was a bunch of counties, like you've got really good county commissioners there on the ground that are working, and they started the American Lands Council and asked me if I would come and kind of be the, be the spokesperson and the voice for it. So this has all been driven from the bottom up, which is the best, uh, best form of our politics. We have a system that allows us individually to make a difference, and i got to tell you, I mean, I got involved as a dad because I see the, the same things you see. I see our ability, our way of life being undermined. Um, we're, we're, we're mortgaging our children's future, our own future at this point. And so I got involved, you know, five years ago. And, and this is now, we're, we're, we're having news on this internationally. I mean, they're looking at this transfer of public lands issue internationally. And so the things that people can do immediately, and we'll, we'll cu- keep coming back to this, but right now, on the AmericanLandsCouncil.org website, sign the petition, a really simple little petition. Get on there and sign the petition that just says, I want better access, better health, better productivity for my land by transferring it to local control. And get on and sign the petition, and then we start gathering the, the, the troops together, if you will, and we start building this effort. But, you know, what's fascinating, Craig, I mean, think about this right now. Right now, Canada... The, the central government, the federal government of Canada, is transferring land, water, and resources to the provinces and the territories in Canada. Because, Craig, this will crack you up. Guess what they figured out? They said, we learned that if we allow the people whose lives and livelihoods depend upon these local resources, that if we let them make the decisions who are closer to the matter, we get a better decision. Oh, absolutely. They would. Uh, people are more vested in taking care of the land around them. It's it, it it's it's. <laughs> you would. I was going to say it's common sense, uh, but I, I go without words at that point because they're taking advantage well, of the people. Yeah, it's common sense in Canada. It used to be common sense in the United States of America, but now, um, you know, now we've got centralized control of land and resource over, you know, 50% of the land in the West, um, you know, 53% of the land in Oregon. And, and what's crazy, Craig, is 
when I've been debating uh, law professors and political science professors and whatnot, they say, you say, well, help me understand, why does the federal government control more than 50% of all the real estate in the western United States? And even to this day, one of the top arguments that comes up, they'll say, well, your land is arid in the west, therefore the federal government controls it. Oh. Well, you know, I, I, I've, had the, I've had the pleasure of being in Oregon a number of times, and Oregon doesn't strike me as an arid state. And even if that were the standard, how do you come up with some subjective uh, uh, determination of arid, and therefore you conjure up some arid clause to the Constitution and control 53% of the land in the state of Oregon, 62% of the land in the state of Alaska, where they have a million lakes, and only 700,000 people. But these are some of the arguments that they throw out to say, well, no, this is just the way it is. We control your land, when that is absolutely antithetical to our very form of government, which is established on the private right, the right and control of property, liberty, and self-governance. I know it. So we simply need to get back to those things. Well, exactly right. And I, uh, I, I am so amazed, Ken, that when you look at this argument and the environmentalists, number one, timber industry has been uh, basically beat at their own game because the environmentalists used uh, the equal opportunity, you know, into in federal uh, courts act. Right? It's the. Um, Equal Access to Justice Act. Thank uh -huh. you so much. Thank you. And so they've been able to make money. The environmentalists make money when they go to court, and then they they will win uh, in federal court, and then they use that as a money-making scheme, and they can buy more land. Well, with the fires that are going, the carbon, you don't hear anything from them. And the one thing, Ken, I wanted to get to, you don't hear from the all the animals and wildlife that is destroyed by these epic fires. You notice that their environmentalists are really quiet when that goes on. Yeah, I mean, so, so the um, Congress did some studies last year and they looked at the, the amount of uh, acres burned versus the uh, um, the fires and it's just it's just off the charts right? oh, it, i mean yeah. we've, we've got uh, uh millions and well, here i'll show you right now i'll just pull it up and, and walk through it but but you know since 1983 we've gone from about 13 billion board feet harvested down to less than one and at the oh. same time the wildfires have gone from um you know about a million acres burned to you know as high as nine to ten million acres burned a year and, and see and, I'm, I mean, I'm fine with acres i'm fine with fires burning i know it's a natural situation but what people are missing is they're burning hotter they're burning faster they're burning more out of control because they have more fuel to burn yeah yeah i had a really good example from a county commissioner in idaho and he said you know think about think about if you had a pen that would hold about 50 cows. And you had food for 50 cows, and you had water for 50 cows. And and yet you decided you were gonna put a thousand cows in that pen <laughs> and, just, and just walk away. You know, and how well would they fare? Well, that's, that's what's happening in our forests. You know, we have forests that have a sustaining capacity of 40, 50, maybe 100 trees to an acre. And because of these federal policies and the litigation from these groups, um, we, we've got, we've got six, seven, eight hundred thousand trees to an acre, they're fighting each other for nutrients, for water, for air, for light, and because they're, they're, they're crowding each other out, they're dying, and forests are dead all over the oh, world, yeah. Craig. Oh, I know it. And, and now it's those, it's those dead forests that create this inordinate fuel load that where, where a typical ordinary wildfire would be help, healthy, you've got catastrophic fire. That's a very different animal. Oh, very different than, animal. Than just wildfire. Yeah. And so now it's burning and sterilizing the ground. There's no ground cover left. It takes away the watershed. It burns millions of animals. And then it devastates the habitat. And what, what really is, is amazing to me, we had a situation down here where, you know, the, the, the inordinate growth has killed the forest. And they said, okay, we've got to go in and, 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 and burn out. You know, the Forest Service said they've got to go in and burn out 30 to 50,000 acres. And the county sheriff and county commissioner said, well, can we go in and at least harvest what's still salvageable before you do that? 
you know, to not burn it, right? So sequester the carbon, put it to good use, put it to economic productivity. It's already dead. Can we go in and just use what's salvageable? No, 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 we can't do that. You'd have to do an environmental impact statement. It would take years and years. And so we just have to watch it burn. Exactly. And I wonder, you brought up that great point because when you, if you want to go scientifically and go back to the quote unquote carbon footprint, you know, now, now those two words, carbon footprint, when you go to an environmentalist or someone that wants to, you know, stand up and throw that old growth timber back at you, carbon footprint will put them in their tracks, won't it? Yeah, I mean, the amount of, when you're burning six to seven million acres a year, the, uh, the carbon that is being released on that is, is, is unbelievable. And then you're losing all of the sequestration. I mean, the forests are some of the best carbon sinks where you've got healthy forests. But when you're burning six million acres a year, you, you lose uh, the ability to hold back, you know, the watershed, the habitat, um, you know, and to, to have that regeneration uh, of carbon and oxygen that forests were meant to do. And so, as you said at the beginning of the program, I mean, it's this incredible renewable resource. The problem that we have now, I mean, you've got, uh, there was an NPR story, oh, earlier last year that talked about Josephine County, where yep. Josephine County, I mean, I, I, you know, I've been to Sheriff Gilbertson's home, and on, on their, their sheriff's patch, they have logging trucks. That's what funded their public safety. That's what funded education. Well, all of that's been taken away. Their mills are all gone. They were supposed to be getting secure rural schools payments in lieu of the economic activity they would get from using their own resource. That's all gone. And so now Sheriff Gilbertson has gone from about 30-some-odd sheriff's deputies down to two. And his NPR story was this poor woman calling in um, after hours saying, hey, somebody's beating on my door. Can you please send someone out? And they said, I'm sorry, the sheriff can only operate between 9 and 5 because they just don't have people. And the woman got raped and brutalized. I mean, this is public safety, this is education, this is jobs, and, Craig, it's forest health and it's access. It's not an either-or situation. No. And, you know, and right now, the, the federal government is strung out into so many different things. It's got conflicts all over the world. It's got economic issues all over the world. We really need to help our federal government focus on those specific limited things that only it can do and do well. And at the local level, we can manage forests and economies and land and have greater productivity that benefits the whole nation. Well, exactly right. And you said it over the break. It's not a party thing. It's not a left or a right thing. This is an American thing. So, uh, Ken, I'm, unfortunately, we're out of time. And it's, it's just a wealth of information. Uh, I want to have you back real soon. And, of course, helping out with this petition. So we'll be talking about that. Uh, but I've got to get going. Ken, it's great to have you on the program this morning. Yeah, Just give people to AmericanLandCouncil.org, sign the petition, and encourage your counties and your state representatives to keep moving on this. Thank you very much, Craig. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Ken Ivory with the American Lands Council. We'll be back. Oh, fantastic stuff. After this break on the Sunrise Show, News Radio 880. KCMX will be back after this. You can always find us on the web. And the phone number, of course, 541-772-8255. We'll be discussing this petition when we come back.